So first up here is John Massengill, author of the book about 1900 New York. Thank you, Anne. So the great Jane Jacobs wrote in The Death and Life of the Great American City. Can you hear me? So the great, great Jane Jacobs wrote in her book, The Death and Life of the Great American Cities. Streets and their sidewalks, the main public places of a city are its most vital organs. Think of a city and what comes to mind, its streets. If a city's streets look interesting, the city looks interesting. And if they look dull, the city looks dull. Well, take a look. Take a look behind you. And already in 1955, she wrote that the glass boxes on Park Avenue were making that street boring. And here's the most quoted line in architecture. We shape our buildings, thereafter, that, thereafter they shape us. That line from Winston Churchill is repeated so often because it's true. Neuroscientists, psychologists, and sociologists confirm that architecture affects our happiness and well-being. Now, McKinley and White, the architects of the Hotel Pennsylvania, were known across America as the best architects in the country. They designed the best building ever demolished in New York. Of course, I'm talking about the old Penn Station. And it's fair to call them the best New York architects of all time. So combine all that with the fact that the greenest building is one already built, regardless of their lead ratings, the glass towers sprouting all over New York are energy halls now and in, in the future. So the conclusion seems simple. From here on, let's preserve all buildings in New York designed by McKinley and White. Let's hear it for McKinley and White. Uh, cities and buildings and streets and squares that make them are among the greatest achievements of humanity. We want to pass them on to our descendants. We don't want to pass on inhumanly scale, climate-killing cities that make the, worse, not, make the world worse now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you, John.